Hello, my name is Mariana, and today this is a collective reading that actually I pulled this spread a long time ago now, at least it feels like. Um, so I even mentioned it in the collective reading that I did for the full moon in Aries, and I already tried to record this message once, um, and it's been, you know, a few days, a good few days. And then the full moon came, and then finally, I feel like it's now time to um, receive this message from the earth. So this is kind of a continuation from the message from the water that came before that full moon uh, collective reading. And I sat down, you know, as I said, before the full moon, uh, just to see if another element would like to speak. And because at the very end of that reading from the water, um, the Brian Froud um, Fairies uh, Oracle deck was really highlighted to me. And it was in fact uh, mentioned in the uh, extended for that reading. Um, I just sat down with this deck, which I got in Canada, and it was actually hard to find. So I'm actually very glad that I uh, got it. Um, so yeah, I I don't I don't know these cards all that well. I'm kind of new to these cards. Um, I played with them back in Canada, and then when I arrived here back in Brazil, the same thing. But it's always been kind of like my personal readings a few things that I would like to know for myself. So I just used those cards. So I'm not that familiar with all of the cards in the deck, um, but it's funny because when I sat down to pull from the uh, Fairies Oracle for this reading, for this message, because I wanted some sort of encouragement to see which element was going to speak through, even though I already had some sort of inkling that it was going to be the earth, right? Especially because that was um, like the atmosphere, the energy that I was picking up from the uh, fairies. The very first card that jumped out of the deck, which I'm going to show you being the fairies of the future, which is number 33. Maybe that's significant for some of you. Uh, definitely for me it is. Um, but the funny thing about this card is that even before I got the deck in Canada, when I went to see um, this deck at a bookstore, uh, they didn't have any to sell. They only had like one open that was um, for the customers to play with. This was the exact card that came through. And, you know, when I pulled this card, you know, a few days ago for this message, I was like in shock. I was like, okay, so here we are almost like back from the future or, uh, you know, connecting to something that happened in the past, but it's almost like it's being, it being actualized or it's being, um, it's like the, the time now is going to be reset somehow. And it's funny because it's taken me so long to record this message, right? So it feels like the future is wanting to be revealed, but it requires, it requires a perfect timing for this message to be revealed. So I wonder if, you know, for some people, this is going to arrive even, you know, a long time after I have published this, which is just funny because now where I am at this very moment, right, present in my time and space, it feels very bizarre because it's almost like I am already connecting with the future, right? And it's beautiful because this card is depicted with so many different beings, right? Of course, these two are the main um, highlighted ones, but there is so much going on. And even in the book, it's like um, Brian Frow describes like each element, each being in this card and describing like the essence of each one or what they're doing in this scene and how they are connecting with different timelines and different times and spaces and, you know, looking at different directions. It's so funny because 
as I was saying, it's like it feels awkward for me to sit down here and connect with my present time because what this recording is going to do, it's like it's already weaving some sort of magical invisible thread to you who possibly is already in the future, right? So this is the message from the earth and it's somehow, you know, I'm just thinking about like the new earth, which, you know, the same way that you are already in the future, that I'm recording this already in the past, but yet is still my present, right? All of this beautiful mess of, you know, different entities and different beings coming from different perspectives, but all together, like just enriching this one picture, right? Um, it's beautiful because when I'm here, it's like enriching this existence. Um, but the thing about this um, bizarre, complex weaving of different times is that there is some sort of um, connection from where I am right now to where I have been when I got this deck, when this card first came to me and like where I'm going in the future or possibly where I'm standing right now, how you from the future are going to receive that and how that is such, it's like that is such perfection. It's like it's such a perfect weaving of the universe or even like the earth and how earth is also a part of, it's almost like I'm seeing like um, a pearl necklace, right? And it's almost like the, the precious, the most precious, um, pearl on this necklace it's like it's earth right and it's like it needs to um be pulled to be part of this in a specific way in a specific order which in fact is here so that was the opening card and you know i'm just thinking about like the number 33 which is now um catching my eyes just because um yeah um I am approaching 33, right? So I was just reluctant to share that, but I know it's a very significant uh, master number. So I wonder what's awaiting for me in my own future uh, when I turn 33. But anyways, so that's maybe just a side note for some of you. Um, but the thing about the order is significant. So that card was already talking about like, this perfection of different times coming together. And then when I sat down to pull cards from my original tarot deck, the message was very clear and it feels like Mother Earth is talking from the future. It's almost like this new Earth. That's the other thought that I didn't complete, but now it's coming back. So it's like new Earth. It's already this future for where we are, but it's already here. It's not there, right? It's like it's already... Um, being woven together with our timeline somehow. And that's because there is this course correction and parallel timelines that I want to say that are increasingly exchanging notes or exchanging, it's coming through as like filaments of the DNA, right? It's like when there is this specific order, this specific alignment, it's like, there is this possibility of kind of like this, um, how do I explain this? It's like this uh, leap, right? It's like this um, evolution that happens in a very fast way. I don't know if I'm making myself clear. Although I wanna say that like the very last card being the temperance, which talks about being patient, right? It's like it feels, or it might feel for some, that it's taken a long time, just the way that I was feeling, you know, how long this reading has uh, taken me to like be recorded actually, or to be put out there. But I do feel like it has to do with mother earth itself because it's being represented by the very first card, which is the queen of cups. <laughs> We're almost 10 minutes in and now I'm just showing the very first card, right? So talk about like patience. Um, but this queen of cups is the embodiment of mother earth. And I know it's uh, the Queen of Cups, right? So it's water, but think about the planet itself. It's like, although it's called Earth, we all know that it's majority uh, of um, the surface of uh, the Earth is water, right? So 
it's something to think about. It's like maybe this planet should have been called planet water instead of planet Earth. But here we are with this feminine archetype, this very loving, very kind, very um, embracing, very um, it's like this very generous heart, right? That is talking to us from a very open, but also very mature, right? In terms of um, it's like regulating the waters of the planet, right? And it's been like uh, this, you know, it's just, we're about to enter the uh, new moon in Scorpio, right? Which is a, a water sign. So there is a lot of instability and, you know, these deep, deep waters just being shaken and moved. But Mother Earth is here saying that it's all good, even though at first it might not feel like that. Three of Swords here is talking about how, how maybe at first, because everything is distorted, we're going to feel like that is a disaster. We're going to feel like everything is upside down, which in fact is, and Mother Earth here is shaking things up, right? Perhaps creating all of these, uh, you know, shaking of the waters. It's just talking about like how the water is moving but it's a way for Mother Earth to course correct, correct this co-creation because to me, the threes represent co-creation, but being the three of swords, it's like this um, distorted co-creation. It's like one that it's like instigate fear or pain or heartbreak instead of, you know, union and togetherness and love and kindness and all of that. So Mother Earth is looking at us, you know, uh, capsized basically, um, and moving all of the waters. It's almost like these waves and these, um, these currents, right? It's like, it's just like the, the seas and the, the waters of the planet. It's like, I was just going to say the earth, but I meant to say the water, right? So it's like, it's blended. It is blended because of the queen of cups. This is the representation Kind of like the the um, uh it's not the embodiment of like the energy of the earth but it's like how we perceive the planet breathing for instance right it's like the movement of the tides the movement of the ocean the movement of the waves but that is because the water itself wants to turn us like from you know being capsized to being upright and we don't see it that way. So she has to be a little bit more um, emphatic or a little bit more, um, how do I say this? Not tough, but maybe that, maybe that's the word. Um, the judgment here is just talking about enough is enough. No more distortion. I don't want to cause pain. It's like, you're not here to suffer. You're not here to feel the heartbreak. You're not here to, um, to perish is what I'm hearing. I'm not sure. I, I don't know that word, but it's what I'm hearing. Um, so the judgment is the tool. It's the powerful tool that mother earth or mother water or mother of the waters, um, is giving us, but you know, and it's, just like uh, how these big, it's like these big masses of water, right? I'm just thinking about Neptune with um, the trident and with like, you know, the ability to create like these uh, tornadoes in the water. What is it called? Whoa, uh, I can't, I can't remember. I always forget the name of the, the tornado in the water. But anyways, if you know it, you know it. Um, or like tsunamis or whatever you want to feel like describing like this huge movement of water, right? Or like these bodies of water just becoming um, active, right? Let's just say like that. So, but the true treasure, the, t the true tool comes with those movements and now i'm just thinking like i'm receiving that image of like message in a bottle right it's like it's incredible how like one thing that was um you know um given to the water or thrown at the water 
you know, from one side of the planet, it's like just crosses to the other side. And I'm thinking about like the butterfly effect. It's like, but how it takes some time to get to like another continent or another shore. It's like on the other side of the planet. But that's the tool that this queen, this mother earth is giving to us saying no more of the three of swords, no more of the distortion. It's like you're going to feel this empowerment, but you also have to take the responsibility because enough is enough, right? And the reason why she's saying, I feel like enough is enough is because with the six of pentacles, there is the intention of bringing things into balance, into some sort of justice in uh, like this order, right? It's almost like this order in a planet that knows its power and i'm just i'm not just talking about like the planet itself because we are the planet right so it's like we we need to empower ourselves we need to know like the responsibility of owning this and carrying this and using this properly but with fairness with justice with harmony with peace with um equanimity right in every single relationship and the first one that I do feel like is kind of like a pointed at by this one, because, you know, remember that the very next card that came after the queen was the three of swords. So it's almost like maybe the one relationship that you have, like the hardest time at this moment, it's like, that is exactly the situation that you're going to receive this tool that maybe has taken, you know, eons to get to this point because the waters were moving in such a way even within you right within your emotions that right now you have a chance to renegotiate the terms of this contract it's like there is this opportunity to it's like to become at peace right to know that you are giving as much as you can but you're also receiving everything that is needed that you need and that the other person is also capable of giving to you so there is this opportunity of balancing out the situation that has been distorted but then here the very uh, last uh, bottom row here is talking about this fast pace evolution or the, this increase in um like self-actualization because it's taken a long time to get to this point, but it almost feels like we're just one drop away. Remember that the temperance card is here. It's like, we're just one or two drops away from receiving everything that we need. But it's like, the, it's like these last two drops or like when the moment comes for these last two drops, it's like you're going to experience or we as a collect collective are going to experience the page turning into a king right and it's almost like this it's almost like this path of it's like um word is not coming it's like i'm i'm completely blank now but it's like this speedy evolution it's like this very very rapid download that comes and takes you from the page into the king position right which symbolizes the sovereign team so yeah i was going to say the other way around but the page of wands and the king of swords so it's going from the excitement to like knowingness and it's funny because being the king of swords which is a card that you know it's been like coming up a lot, right? It's like the recent few collective readings, this king has been talking about like, like this awareness, right? But going even beyond the awareness that we already have. Still, the six of pentacles being here and being this leap, yeah, that's the word, okay, the leap between the page to the king, there's something about our excitement that it's a little bit chaotic, but it's exactly the combustion. It's exactly the uh, force that is going to um, remove us from stagnation or, or from inertia. And when we get to this point of sovereignty, but uh, it's more like this 
independent mind or this um, discerning mind. It wants to be like this mind that recognizes the voice from the chaos, right? Because something that can be very exciting, I'm just talking about like, um, you know, any journey of self-awareness can be very exciting in the beginning, right? But then it's like, once you get to the point that is very triggering, it can be very scary at the same time and confusing at the same time. But because we are all now carrying this tool that at the same time gives us the power to change things, to reclaim our relationships and it's like renegotiate our deal, right? Or renegotiate our contract with everyone in order to feel this balance, in order to achieve this harmony. I do feel like we're all getting to a point where it's like we're not going to be just in this naive position of like everything that is um, exciting and enticing and, you know, maybe um, dis dispersive, um, not dis distractive, right? But here it's almost like this voice of reason that brings us to this sovereignty and that's the leap. It's almost like these are all of these characters, right? All of these voices inside us, right? Maybe all around us. And it's like, it's a little bit chaotic. But here it's almost like with this discernment, with this sense of direction, with this sense of sovereignty, it's like, that's when our mind is ready to receive this last drop. So I do feel like maybe it feels like it's going to speed up because from the page to the king, it's almost like this, you know, um, taking this leap and it's a huge gap, right? It's like there are two cards in between that is just like being um, jumped over, but really it's taken a long time, right? It's like the cup has been slowly being filled and filled and filled, right? With exciting things, with things that are meant to be instigating, are meant to be enlivening, are meant to be moving. But at some point, it's like the calm prevails. It's like, it's going to be, okay, I'm full, right? To a certain degree that I know that once these last few drops have been given, it's like, I'm okay, right? It's like, now I'm okay. And that's when it's like this true alchemy happens, right? So I wonder what this alchemy truly is. I do feel like the sense of sovereignty, it's almost like this openness this um awareness this um expansion of the mind but you know just because um the temperance card or is the card that represents sagittarius and sagittarius is the fire right the fire that is meant to take us elsewhere take us to the unknown it's like don't forget about this it's like this was exactly the first few steps that brought you to where you are so that now you can get like the full, it's like the, the full, it's like the full ingredient, the full recipe. It's like, there is some sort of, um, the right order, right? It's like the recipe is not complete without these two last drops. So, there needs to be some time to receive this, but it's only when you have achieved some sort of maturity, spiritual maturity or spiritual awareness that you are okay to wait for these last few drops. And I do feel like they don't take that long, but it's like, there is a long time here, right? There's a long time. It's like, it's almost like playing small, right? But then as soon as there is like this, this shift, it's like it arrives because the waters are already being moved. So it's almost like receiving that message in a bottle, right? It's like these last few drops are almost like this, you know, some sort of like knowledge that, you know, crossed through the planet and 
it's like the perfect last two ingredients that were needed for this recipe to be complete. Which, you know, in another hand, it's like it's going to just uh, be another leap, right? Because it's the Sagittarius energy, which is, you know, taking us to, you know, larger horizons or um, it's like just a more open consciousness, right? To explore the unknown. But we are in this sovereignty. That's the reason why we're even able to receive that. So you see the paradox, right? It feels like it's taken a long time, but really it's like it's really quick. But we we have to be in this state, right? So I know it might have been a little bit uh, confusing or a little bit long. Um, yeah, maybe these different timelines are all over the place. But remember, it's like it's meant to be ordered. As I said, it's like it's meant to be aligned so that we can receive these last few drops from the future, perhaps, right? However you resonate with that, I truly hope that this was helpful. I am going to pull more cards to see where this wants to go, finally, um, and also where it is. I'm going to pull from the astrological rooms in the extended reading, so if you want to join me there, I'll be very happy to see you. You can find link down below. If not, I'll see you next time. Bye!